Thanks for having me, Tanya. And thanks to everyone out there who's joining us today. So I'm excited to be demonstrating some of these new features in Curl Painter 2020. I'm not gonna have time to cover every single new feature, so I've kind of selected a few key features that are gonna work together in a painting workflow. But there are also some lessons on the Painter Tutorials YouTube channel that'll walk you through the features that I'm not able to cover today. So what you will see here is the default Corel Painter 2020 workspace. It might look a wee bit different because there's the new harmonies panel here, and there are some new labels up here that help you make better sense of the properties that you can choose for brushes and tools. But I'm going to go ahead and before I do anything, I'm gonna run, or I'm gonna show you the brush accelerator because that's really important to do upfront. Now, when you first launch Corel Painter, you will be greeted with the welcome screen, and that's really the first place you might notice this brush accelerator. There we go. So I've already gone ahead and, and ran mine just because I want everything to be performing nicely, and I get to see this test here. But what you would want to do is on this screen, there's a button that says optimize, and you can go ahead and run the brush accelerator. Now you're going to want to make sure you don't have a lot of stuff running in the background so you can try it out now if you're following along but you might want to run it later after the webinar is over just so you don't have anything else running um, that would be good and so once you've run it you're going to see your score here and this will give you some idea of how painter is going to perform and how well it's going to be able to utilize these new performance enhancements so my system exceeds the rec recommended specifications yours may or may not if it doesn't and you see a yellow or a red cylinder here, this is giving you an idea of a place where you might be able to improve something on your system by upgrading a, a component of your system like your video card or maybe even just getting that new computer that you've been thinking about. So, you know, I happen to have green cylinders here, but you may find that for graphics, you don't have a very good video card. And so it's lacking a bit there. You could add a new video card and then, you know, that cylinder might increase. You also get a feel for how much these individual aspects are going to contribute to performance on your system. So on my system, GPU is 64.3 times faster, or it's adding 64.3 more uh, power to Corel Painter. So it's having the most impact. My video card is really the biggest factor here. So this is something that's going to help Corel Painter work faster, but it's also going to be dependent on the components of your computer to be able to fully utilize all this stuff. So I know this is kind of technical computer guy stuff. So we'll get into some painting stuff here next. So before we can start painting with these brushes, we need to be able to find them. Quick way to find them is to go to your brush selector and there's the new fast ornate and fast and simple brush categories. These are 26 new optimized brushes that will support these new optimization features. Now, some are going to support GPU, AVX2, and multi-core. Some are going to support maybe one or two of those options. So one way that we can see what they're using is we can go to the advanced menu. And this is, of course, after you've run the brush accelerator on your system. And we can look under the new performance panel, and this is going to show us exactly what performance options are being used here. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to go to the window menu and I'm going to go to Brush Selector, and I'm gonna open the new Compact Brush Selector. I will go into more detail about the changes in this Brush Selector in a minute, but for now I just wanna have it open so I can quickly go through these brushes. So you'll notice in this panel here, can quickly go through some brushes, and in the Performance panel, it's going to update each time I select a brush. So Bristle Background, I'm gonna go ahead and pop open this layer here so I can paint on it. Bristle background is a nice big bristly brush and this uses GPU AVX2 and multi-core. So I can paint on a fairly large canvas and get nice performance here. Now this canvas, if I go to canvas resize, is 4,000 by around 2,000 pixels. So that's a pretty big canvas. If we change that to inches, 26 by 15, and the performance I get is pretty nice and smooth. So this brush uses all three of these features, but if we select something else like bristle color, it does not support GPU. Now it's still gonna be 
a little bit faster because it's been optimized for multi-core and AVX2, but it's not supporting that additional GPU boost. So the ones that have GPU support are going to be the fastest or have the, the biggest performance gains on a system that can utilize GPU. So there are these brushes, but there are many, many other brushes and brush technologies that can support GPU and AVX2. And in order to find those, we can go to Window, Search, and we can type in GPU into the search. So these are all the brushes that support GPU in Corel Painter in the currently selected Corel Painter library, Corel Painter 2020 library. Uh, some of these are showing custom brushes. You can, if you want, take a brush that was previously not supporting GPU that can support it and turn it into a brush that now does support GPU. So let's say you have a brush from an older version of Painter that you want to update for this version. You can do that here in the performance panel. So let's say, for example, I have a custom brush here called Digital Airbrush. Now, this came from an older version of Workspace, from an older workspace, and I've been using this brush for a while for several versions of Painter. So, by default, if I'd imported this brush, it would say it would have disabled GPU for this brush checked. So, in order to enable GPU, I just need to uncheck that box, and that enables GPU. So, you can go through and do that for any of the brushes that you now want to update. Now there's probably inevitably going to be a question like which brushes can support GPU. That's kind of a lengthy answer, so I'm going to try to answer it kind of quickly here. The best way to know is to, in the advanced brush controls, look under general, and you can see when you select a brush which dab type it's using, stroke type, method, and so on. So as far as what's supported in these brush technologies, that'll give you an idea of what kind of brushes will work. So in dab type, in this first category here, this first grouping, these are all stamp type brushes, computed circular, circular, single pixel, static bristle, and so on. These are all supported as dab types. If we go to stroke type, the stroke types are all supported for those dab types. And for the method, it does kind of depend here. Not all of the methods are going to be supported. I believe it's build up, cover, eraser, digital wet, and marker. So that covers a lot of brushes and a lot of different things that you can do. You can make glazing brushes, you can make airbrushes, you can do a lot of stuff. So now that we know how to find the brushes and what they do and we know why they're faster, let's take a look at how to actually use some of them in a workflow. So I'm going to load my custom workspace because the, the one of the things I like the most about Corel Painter is the fact that I can just set this workspace up to be exactly how I want it. So in my layout here, I have a pre-saved layout. This is just going to arrange some things a little bit differently. And if you're interested in this workspace, this is something that I do have on my website. You can download it, install it, and it will make your Corel Painter interface look exactly like mine. Now, I will say that the 2020 version of my workspace is not available yet, so it won't look exactly like this, but it'll look close. So there's some customization here. I've added these custom icons in this palette over on the left, so unless you're using my workspace, that's going to look a little strange to you. But you'll notice that I have my performance panel open here, so I can easily make sure that you know brushes are using these performance settings. I also have a nice stroke preview here so I can see what the brush will look like. Uh, some of these are custom panels with different shortcuts and things like that, so hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, so let's see here. Let's talk about the compact brush selector. So the compact brush selector is really just a more compact version of the brush selector, which you could pop out in Corel Painter 2019. And it shows you these really nice stroke and dab previews. These stroke and dab previews have been updated. Now, for these brushes, I've created my own custom dabs. So let's switch to something else, acrylics and gouache. And now you can see that the dabs better represent what the brush is going to do. We could try, 
let's say these sergeant brushes. And you can see all the different kinds of dabs. If it's a captured dab, it'll show you a captured dab and so on. You also see these nice stroke previews, which have been updated. And these better represent the look of the brush or the character of the brush. What's cool about this too is you can actually take it and look, you can stretch it out wide like that. So if you want a nice wide panel, you can do that. And then of course you can get to the different categories here, change your libraries here. You can also customize the panel if you want. You can show more or less content. You can change the way that the variants look if you want it to be, let's say just a, a list instead of showing the stroke preview, you can do that. Um, one thing that's cool is that you can also have more than one brush selector open. So in brush selector in the window menu, you can also have the full view one. So let's say you customize this one in a certain way. We'll show just the icons, whoops. You know, maybe you wanted one that looks like that and then who knows, but the point is you can, you can customize this to your heart's content. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this back. And so one thing that I want to do here is go to my demo sky layer, which I'm just using as the background for these mountains here. And I'm going to go to edit fill. And the next new feature that we'll take a look at is the universal color picker. And this universal color picker is going to show up anywhere where you might choose color when you're filling with color or when you're changing the color of a shape tool or if a shapes stroke or fill or the color picker here, they're all the same color picker. They all provide the same features. So we're all familiar with this. We have our color picker triangle and our hue ring, but now we also have these color ramp sliders for hue, saturation, and value. So rather than just being a, a blank slider, you can actually see the color on the slider. I think this is great because now you can just really easily fine tune your color and make little changes to it. Another thing that will help with that, if you look at this swatch here for your color, when I change my color, that swatch is divided in half. So I can see my previous color against the new color that I'm selecting. So if you wanted to make a very subtle change, you can easily do that. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and fill the sky with well, maybe something like this color here. And then if I wanted to change my color, we'll watch this little preview here. Let's say I wanted to make it just a bit dark, a bit lighter. I can see that change in color very easily right there before I even put it down. So now if I take an airbrush, and I paint a little bit in, maybe we'll make that just a bit brighter. I can actually see that change before I start painting, which saves me time. I don't have to paint and then undo and try to guess. So let's say I want to make that color darker. I already have an idea of how that's going to look. So those color sliders are available in the color picker. You can open them in a new compact color panel. If we go to the color menu, there's color panel compact. So this is just a, like a secondary panel that you can use to just show the sliders and you could use only the sliders. You don't even have to really use the color panel if you want. I have this customized a bit. I've hidden the clone color button and the color swatches from this panel. So you have some customizations you can make to that. While we're looking at colors, uh, there is the color harmonies panel, which is really awesome. Color can be one of those things where you get you get stuck on it. You, you're painting something and you have a, a nice red flower and you're thinking, what, what color should I use for the background? And you try all kinds of different colors and you know a lot of them look good, a lot of them look bad, but how do you just pick one and decide on one? Well, that's where color harmonies come in. Color harmonies can give you inspiration. Color harmonies can take the guesswork out of choosing colors. What they do is they show you colors that work well together so you can pick a base color. Let's say maybe this, color here is my base color of the sky. I'm seeing in my harmonies panel different types of harmony. So if we go to the top right menu, you can actually show and hide these different harmonies. We have analogous, complementary, split complementary, tetradic, monochromatic, and dark. 
So this harmony is showing me colors that are analogous or not too far away from each other here on the Q ring. And then complementary would be colors that are directly across from each other on the color ring. Now I'm not gonna get deep into color theory here. There are videos you can watch on my YouTube channel that will explain some of that stuff. But basically, these colors are gonna work well together. So if I wanted to go to this clouds layer here, clear it out. And one thing you will wanna um, make sure to do first is if you continue selecting a different color, these harmonies will change unless you lock the base color of the harmony. So I wanna go ahead and just do that. Let's just do that for all of these. That way now, if I select a color that's in the harmony, it's not going to create a new harmony based off of that color. So I got this nice harmonious color and I could use that to put in a cloud in the sky or I could use it on the, on the mountains here. Let's just say we'll use it for the cloud in the sky. Maybe we'll use a little bit of purple for the bottom side of the cloud. All these colors are gonna look nice together. Now there are some, of course, that aren't gonna look nice because color is subjective. So I might take this red here and put this red in the scene and you know, maybe that's just not the right color. So it, it's not a guarantee that any color you get out of here is gonna work well together, but it's really gonna narrow it down. One thing that I really like about this is the monochromatic light and dark because it gives you quick access to different values. So I'm gonna uncheck the lock on these and then I'm going to just sample this purple color that I used. And if I want a darker value, I can get that. Put in dark. Now, obviously I'm not using the correct colors for this scene. I'm, I'm putting in a, a magic cloud here, but this is giving you an idea of what you can do with it. So I can really quickly shade without having to go up here and tinker around too much with these settings. I can just really quickly get um, different color swatches or color strings. So I find that to be particularly helpful. Then if you wanted to, if you wanted to save any of these color sets or color harmonies or individual colors, you can add the swatches to a color set. They'll show up in your color set library and it's just like you squeezed some paint onto a palette and, and mixed your colors and you have all these nice little wells of color to pick from. So if I wanted to clear that out, let's say I've already got some different colors saved here put those in, put in some of that yellow and really whatever I want. So I've kind of identified some of the colors that I want up front and then it takes the guesswork out of, you know, which colors am I gonna use while I'm painting? And it doesn't mean that you can't tweak those colors. You can go in and you can make changes And you can choose colors that aren't in the harmony too. You still have the freedom of really going in and getting whatever you want. So, you know, if I, if I tinkered with this for a while, then I could get something like that. I spent, you know, more than 10 minutes on those clouds, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. Um, one thing that can be really helpful when you're painting is being able to switch between a brush that paints and a brush that blends, or maybe a pencil brush and an eraser. So for this painting, the brushes that I used a lot were the Smooth Palette Knife, which is a brush that adds paint and blends at the same time. And then the Smooth Knife Blender, which is a very similar brush, it just only blends. So with the Smooth Palette Knife, these are, these are custom brushes, by the way, I can add in some detail here. Let me just zoom into this so that you can see what I'm doing. Add some pink to the cloud here and then Sample that color and let's say that I wanted to blend this a little bit. I'll select my Smooth Knife Blender and I'll blend those colors together, blend the edge. Instead of going back and forth and clicking on these brushes, what I can do is I can use this new last used brush toggle button. Click on that and when I do that, it's going to toggle back and forth between 
those two brushes. I can set this up to a keyboard shortcut or an express key or a custom button in my interface. Right now I have it set to the tilde key and the tilde key normally shows and hides the mirror painting plane, but I don't really tend to use mirror painting with a keyboard shortcut, so I've gone ahead and just made it tilde. So if I press that key on my keyboard, which you can't see me doing, but rest assured I'm doing it, I can switch back and forth between those two brushes and I can paint, hit the key again and blend, hit the key again and paint, hit that key again and blend. Now that's going to make your life a lot easier if you work between two different brushes. So there we go, a little piece of a cloud there. Um, I have just a few more things to show you in this workflow and then I think we're gonna answer some of your questions. Um, I already pointed out the property bar labels, but I just wanna go back to those really quick. In the properties bar, you're going to notice that in addition to these labels that make it really easy to see the different groupings of properties and what they relate to, if you're selecting a tool, let's say the selection tool, all these tools are going to have a lot of different relevant properties and essential functions, maybe even other tools available up here in the properties bar. So rather than having to go to the toolbar and select the rectangular marquee or the elliptical marquee, I can now select all of the selection tools, including the magic wand and the selection brush up here from this menu. So I don't have to hunt around over here anymore. Anything that's really gonna be uh, a necessary selection tool or mode or option is going to be available here so I can add to selections, I can change the selections in different ways. If I go to, let's say, the paint bucket, then I have some different options here. So if I go to, let's say, a brush tool, then you may find that depending on the brush you have selected, what shows in the property bar is now more relevant to that particular type of brush. There's also a there have also been some changes to the different flyouts. So if I choose a brush, let's say that uses texture, or not texture, but paper grain, there's a new grain flyout which combines grain with your brush or with your paper libraries and your paper library settings. So you don't really not necessarily have to have this papers panel open on screen. You could access a lot of these controls from within this new flyout. Uh, the last couple things I want to show you within this workflow, and again, th these are things that I use in my own workflow that are a benefit, things I'm happy about. Uh, if, let's say, I hit a layer, like this demo clouds layer, this horrible looking cloud that I painted, <laughs> if I wanted to keep that hidden so no one ever sees it again, but you know, maybe I don't want to accidentally paint on it, if I have that layer hidden and the layer is selected and I go to paint, Corel Painter 2020 will not let me. It'll tell me, you cannot paint on a hidden layer. What are you trying to do here? And so now no more accidental marks on hidden layers. Just as well, I could lock the canvas now if I want to, and it, then it won't let me accidentally paint on the canvas. So the canvas I usually use as my background, and you know, a lot of the time, you might not want anything on your background. It might be, a, let's say, a transparent background or a solid background. You might find you accidentally made a mark on it. Now you can hide that, or not hide it, but lock it. And then among many, many other little updates to the layers palette that I'm not able to mention, uh, you can collapse hidden layers and they will remain hidden. I have some hidden layers here. Do drop all and those layers stay hidden. Voila. All right, perfection. Okay, so let me go through um, some of the questions here. So I think there is still a little confusion that I'm gathering through various questions about how to tell when you have a brush selected, is it being optimized? So I okay. think the best way to do that is by having the performance panel open and to see which technology we're taking advantage of. And the other way is you already showed it in the search panel. Um, depending upon your system, 
when you run the brush accelerator, it might tell you that your system is optimized more for multi-core than GPU. Um, so I don't know, Aaron, if you have any suggestions for how people can truly understand their favorite brushes and whether or not they're optimized in this version of 2020. Sure. I mean, the easiest thing to do, I think, for a person who's not super familiar with Curl Painter and doesn't want to dig into the features is really just have this performance panel open and go through the brushes that you want to know about, and it will actually show you, okay, this brush is using multi-core, AVX2, and GPU, because they're they're showing the green checkbox. If it's not showing you GPU for that brush, then, it's, then it cannot use GPU. So, you know, if I choose, uh, let's say, the Smooth Scratchboard tool, this is a rendering type brush, so it's actually not using any of these optimizations. If I choose this Digital Airbrush, then this is that custom brush I showed you earlier. Initially, it would not have GPU active here, but I unchecked Disable GPU to activate GPU for that brush. So this is using Computed Circular. As I mentioned earlier, any brush that's a circular, computed circular, single pixel, static bristle, or captured dab type can use the GPU, uh, AVX2 and multi-core. But then it, it does depend a little bit on the method that you choose. Not all of these methods will support GPU. So, you know, it's it's going gonna, gonna to be like the, the simpler stamp type brushes. Um, it's not going to be thick paint things like that. Aaron, can you just point out once again how to open up that performance panel? Sure. So you go to the advanced brush controls up here in the top on your properties bar, and there is performance in there. Now I added it to this custom palette here. You can go to the window menu, brush control panels, and you can check performance here. And you can pop it open separately and you can just have it hanging out there. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we also had just a general question. If you have dual monitors, can you pull any of these panels, palettes onto a second one? Uh, yes, I'm using three monitors right now. So if I wanted to take this, for instance, and move it over to my other monitor. You can't see me doing it, but uh, it's there. And you know, you would have to use your mouse to click on it unless that monitor happened to be a touch screen or something. Or you could use the display toggle button uh, if you're using a Wacom tablet that supports that to be able to access the panel. OK, great. Thanks, everybody, for the questions, by the way. Sumaya would like to know, will you have a full course on 2020 soon? Yes, um, the estimated release date will be around September 10th, but it's really just kind of, you know, when I can get it done. It's it's a ton of work. Yeah. Um, okay, so there was, Ethan had asked earlier, and I answered it offline, but when you upgrade to the new product, so let's say 2020, what happens? How do you get your custom brushes and panels and palettes from earlier versions in? Is it possible? I'm not expecting you to show it, but... Yeah, it's it's a long, complicated answer, and I actually do have uh, several tutorials on my YouTube channel. If you just do a search for, let's say, Workspace, um, something ought to come up. But essentially what you want to do is you want to save... Uh, your custom content. So you could do that. Really, the easiest way is to go to the window menu, go to workspace, and then export your workspace. Now, when you export your workspace, it's going to collect together all of the customization, the location of the palettes, uh, your custom brushes, whatever you've added to Painter. There are a couple of minor things that might not transfer over exactly, but you can, of course, you know, tweak that stuff. Um, one consideration, though, is that maybe some stuff from your workspace doesn't mesh well with the new Curl Painter software, so you may want to reset your workspace. You can do that by closing Curl Painter, holding down Shift, and then launching Curl Painter while holding Shift, and then there's an option to reset your workspace while keeping customization like brushes. 
If you do that, that's going to refresh your workspace, make sure that it, it works nicely with Curl Painter 2020. And in doing that, you probably will have to move some palettes back into place and maybe you know tidy things up a little bit, but all of your content will still be there. Um, you do have other options as well. You could, for example, go to the window menu and you could go to custom palette organizer. And here you could, uh, if you have custom palettes that you've created, you could export them as box files. When you export a palette as a box file, it collects together all the brushes, their icons, and uh, puts them into a, a brush category. And then if you import it into a new workspace, you basically get the palette exactly like it was and you would get a category like this, for example, this is a box file I've imported, so I've got all my rendering brushes in there. So that would be for just transferring only brushes. Okay, thank you. That was a great answer. Um, Charles is wondering, how do you unhide a brush category in a brush library? So let's see. Um, there are a lot of different commands that you can get to by right-clicking in the brushes um, menu here. So, for example, we could hide this category for watercolor. And watercolor is hidden. Now, you might be thinking, well, it doesn't do me any good. I'm, I can't right-click on that to show it again. What you want to do is you want to go to Category Display, Show All Categories. And so anything that you that you what made hidden shows again. Fantastic. And then, uh, and then Lena had a question from earlier, didn't she? I don't know if we answered that. Oh, there's oh one. yeah, her. She was wondering how to do a quick selection from one layer and add it to another. Okay. If if I'm understanding the question correctly, I'll just show you real quick. So let's say uh, for this mountain on the right, this big mountain here. If I wanted to get a selection of that layer, but then paint onto a new layer and have the paint stay within that selection, I can select that layer, choose select layer content. You can get to that by right clicking on the layer and then choosing select layer content. And that's gonna put a selection around that layer. You create a new layer above that that you wanna put your paint onto. And then if I selected something, let's say like this, uh, well, let's do this brush, a glazing brush. And I'll get a nice color here, something I can tint this with. Now I can paint. My paint will stay within that selection. And if I were to, let's say, hide the layer underneath, you can see that that paint is going on to its own new layer. So I could put in something like that. Oops. And then, you know, I could use that to, let's say, add some glazing or, or tinting to a layer. Now, I'm doing a really sloppy job here just because I want to just do this quickly. But the way that you would use this then is, you know, maybe you would want to just add a tiny bit of glaze to a layer, have that glaze be on a separate layer. That way you don't have to repaint what's underneath. Okay, so Lena responded and said it's more about selecting from one image and then adding it to another layer. So I think maybe that means you have a separate image open, Lena. A, a, a separate document. Yeah. Yes, she said yes. Okay, so taking a piece of another document and bringing it in. Uh, one way you could do it is with the, the cloning tools. So you could clone something in. You could also use a, a, use a texture brush to load a clone source as your texture and paint it in, or you I think you also might be able to just go ahead and um, select something, like make a selection of something in a document and then copy and paste it into your new document. Um, so let's see. For example, let me see if I can find something to bring in here. Okay, so I have this drawing tablet pen here. Just copy it. I did a select all, copy, paste, and now I've just simply copied and pasted that in. Now, as I mentioned, you could clone that in, or you could use a texture brush, but it, it just really depends on what you're bringing in and how you want to bring it in. Um, you know, the cloning and, and texture painting processes are something that I cover in my tutorials. 
uh, you know, a little bit more in depth than I can explain right now, but there are lots of ways to do that. So I'm not, not sure if that answered your question or not. She said, yes, that helped. So Yay. <laughs> you got it. So I, in general, I think my understanding after this session is that some people have questions about the brush accelerator and when you run the report, exactly what that means for your system and or how it's best to upgrade. If you're getting a score that might be lower than what you expect or you're using brushes that aren't performing as you like. Um, so I think it's an area that we probably need to clarify for mm -hmm. all of you. Um, I see you running the brush accelerator again. <laughs> and I had mentioned, you know, it's going to change as you have different applications open. But, you know, I, I believe that people also don't have a great understanding for what AVX2 means and exactly what components they need in their system that might help improve the performance. You know, that it's a, it's a tricky thing because a lot of us are artists and we're not tech savvy people. And so as simple as you can make this information, it's still like, unless you, you know, unless you build computers and even if you do, you might not understand some of this stuff. So I think, you know, I'm kind of a more tech savvy person. So I, this makes sense to me and maybe that's, maybe that's why, but I think as far as breaking it down and making it pretty simple to where you can get some, some feedback, I think. Corel's done a good job. GPU graphics, that's your graphics processing unit. In layman's terms, that's your video card. A lot of computers will have a built-in video card, which is generally not very powerful. So you can, depending on the computer you have, buy a, a video card that's meant for accelerating graphics. They're usually meant for video games, but you can use them for Corel Painter and video editing and stuff. If you can, buy a new video card, put it in your computer, and you might see that this cylinder goes up and then all of a sudden, you know, you're getting a major boost from your GPU. I have six cores on my computer. That's not a small amount of cores and it exceeds the recommended cores by two, yet CPU is not making that big of a difference in the acceleration of my brushes. Now, if I had more cores, that ratio might change. Uh, if, you know, if I had a, a weaker graphics card, then the, the ratio would change. So. On my system, what's having the most impact is, is GPU. You can click on this, uh, how to interpret your, you can see how to interpret your results by learning more about your results. And it does go into detail about, you know, what some of these things do like AVX2. Um, but really I'm finding that what's making the most difference is the GPU on my system. Thanks for reviewing that, Aaron. I greatly appreciate everything that you did for us at the launch, um, helping us with feature videos and the webinar and, and the fact that you're coming out with the 2020 course, even better. Thanks, Tanya, and thanks everyone for watching. All right, thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.